Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued a royal order to disperse Eid al-Fitr clothing expenses for widows and orphans sponsored by the Royal Humanitarian Foundation. His Majesty delegated the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to implement and follow up on this order. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed well wishes to His Majesty the King on the advent of Eid al-Fitr, wishing good health, wishing His Majesty good health happiness and many happy returns. He praised His Majesty's care and keenness to share the joy of Eid al-Fitr with the RHF members and his keenness to always provide services for them to ensure them a stable and high living standard. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa visited the Majlis of Al Bin Hindi family and the Majlises of the late Ali Rashid Al Amin, Ibrahim Al Sheikh, and Sheikh Adil Maouda. His Royal Highness highlighted that the Kingdom's comprehensive development goals, led by the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, continue to guide Bahrain's present and future ambitions. He noted the Kingdom's long standing history as a beacon of peace and security, making a desirable home to a multitude of peoples. He emphasized that Ramadan Majlises continue to bring together members of society, sharing a national responsibility towards the kingdom and its diverse communities. His Royal Highness emphasized the kingdom's commitment to meeting its development goals, led by His Majesty the King. He added that despite global challenges, the kingdom continues to excel in driving sustainable growth, designed to benefit current and future generations. His Royal Highness reiterated Bahraini citizens' contribution to the kingdom's achievements, noting that they are at the center of all development projects. He emphasized the importance of public-private partnerships in the Kingdom's wider economic development and highlighted the value that public-private partnerships add to furthering the Kingdom's competitiveness and improving investment attractiveness. His Royal Highness expressed his pride in the achievements made by Bahraini women and noted the Kingdom's commitment to implementing strategic plans designed to advance Bahraini women both locally and internationally. The Majlis's hosts and guests expressed their gratitude to His Royal Highness for his visit and noted the diverse achievements the Kingdom of Bahrain has accomplished under the leadership of His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness was accompanied by the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Educational Charitable Trust, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and several several senior officials.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 32 of 2023, appointing two directors at the Education and Training Quality Authority based on the proposal of the Chairman of the Board of Directors of BQA. According to the edict, Amira Jafar was appointed Director of Human and Financial Resources and Amira Mohammed Hassan Al Blushi, Director of National Examinations. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 33 of 2023, appointing directors at the Ministry of Education based on a proposal by the Minister of Education. According to the edict, the following shall be appointed. Sheikh Khalifa bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, Director of Evaluation and Performance. Nadir Muhammad Abdul Rahman Jamali, Director of Physical Education. Hamad Rashid Saad Al Amiri, Director of Services. Reem Abdul Fadl Ahmed Al Sanai, Director of Risk Assessment and Legal Affairs. Sahar Abdul Manam Al Majdoub, Director of Curriculum Development and Policies. Fatma Mahdi Hussain Muhammad Ali, Director of Education Policies and Development. And Halah Al Jafar Ali Nasib, Director of Community Partnership. His Royal Highness issued Edict 34 of 2023, restructuring the Council of Guardianship on the money of the minors and their equivalents, based on the nomination of the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, and following the Cabinet's approval. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 35 of 2023, establishing and forming the National Human Rights Committee, based on the proposal of the Minister of Foreign Affairs and following the approval of the Cabinet. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 36 of 2023, restructuring a committee to follow up on the implementation of the National Energy Efficiency Action Plan and the National Renewable Energy Action Plan and their initiatives based on the nominations of the relevant authorities. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa attended the final match of the Royal Artillery Ramadan Football Championship for officers at the Royal Artillery Stadium. The championship is organized by the Royal Artillery and held under the, His Highness's patronage. His Highness highlighted the important role played by the BDF in creating a collegial environment, particularly during the holy month of Ramadan. He commended the BDF's support of local, regional and international sports competitions and noted their support motivates BDF personnel. After winning the final match 4-2 on penalties, His Highness awarded the General Command Camp Team. He also honored the Royal Bahraini Navy for coming in second place and recognized the tournament's best player, top scorer, and best goalkeeper. The commander of the Royal Artillery presented His Highness with a souvenir on this occasion. His Highness congratulated and thanked the commander of the Royal Artillery and all its members for organizing the tournament, as well as the Bahrain Football Association and all participating entities, directorates, and teams that contributed to the tournament's success. The commander of the Royal Artillery Major General Sheikh Khalifa bin Hassan Al Khalifa and a number of unit commanders and senior BDF officers also attended. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Raja bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, visited the open prisons complex in the presence of the Chief of Public Security, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Interior, and the Director General of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Ten Sentencing to examine the situation of beneficiary inmates and the modern services provided to them within the framework of the program, which is implemented by the General Directorate of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing to embody the Ministry's strategy that is based on promoting human rights in Bahrain. The Minister affirmed that the Directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa 
Al Khalifa to increase the application of the prison's provisions of the alternative sentencing law, in which open prisons is an important stage, represent an excellent beginning of the project, which comes during the reform era of His Majesty the King and reflects his wisdom and humanitarian values by taking into account the social and humanitarian conditions of the convicts. The minister hailed the follow-up of his and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and his directors to provide optimal opportunities for beneficiaries to gradually return to society within the framework of the criminal justice system. He stated that the achievements made through the alternative sentencing project and the application of the law on 558 inmates affirm that quality of planning and accuracy of implementation are the main unifying features of the project from which 5,432 inmates benefited and that the positive results asserts its success. The minister was briefed on the, by the Director General of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing, Sheikh Khaled bin Rashid Al Khalifa, on the rehabilitation and training services and programs offered by beneficiaries to beneficiaries of the Open Prisons Program, which comes as a continuation of the successes of the Alternative Sentencing Project. Sheikh Khaled noted the cooperation with Injaz Bahrain, the Nasser Vocational Training Center, and a number of concerned authorities in the Ministry of Interior. He reviewed the facilities, equipment, and services provided to the inmates and workflow and followed the procedures and watched a presentation made by a number of beneficiaries of the open prisons where they praised the programs and services they received. The minister was also briefed by Injaz Bahrain on the programs offered in the second phase, which aimed to prepare the beneficiaries for the labor markets. The minister expressed thanks and appreciation to the Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing General Directorates and its role in implementing the modern reform and rehabilitation program and applying accurate and effective standards that ensure the success of the program and its continuation in promoting the National Human Rights March. He also expressed appreciation to the parties that aided in the implementation of the program and the role played by the private sector institutions in this regard, wishing everyone success in serving the country. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, chaired the meeting of the National Human Rights Committee within the par with the participation of committee members from all relevant government agencies. The Minister expressed pride in the human rights achievements made by the Kingdom at all levels. He praised the Human Rights Council's adoption of Bahrain's final report for its fourth session, praising the efforts that come in line with the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty the King and the directors of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to respect and protect human rights and fundamental freedoms. During the previous Representatives Council session, the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Ramehi, revealed that the number of applications received by the Ministry to benefit from housing financing programs since it was announced eight months ago exceeded 7,000. She stated that the Ministry succeeded in completing 4,000 applications, adding that this number is equivalent to establishing a housing city and an indicator of the success of the housing financing programs. She affirmed that 80% of the 4,000 requests belong to those who were on the waiting lists. The chief prosecutor at the execution prosecution stated that the public prosecution continues implementing the alternative penalties and procedures law and its provisions. He added that this is in line with the royal directives to expand the implementation of the alternative sentencing law, taking into account the personal and social conditions of the convicts. He noted that the public prosecution had received requests from the General Directorate of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing to replace custodial penalties with alternative sentences for some inmates. He added that the cases had had been studied and that penalties of 558 inmates who met the requirements had been replaced, which takes the overall number of those who have benefited from the law since its inception to 5,432 convicts. He said that 46 convicts had been enrolled in the latest training and rehabilitation programs within the open prison system by subjecting them to psychological and social rehabilitation programs in order to rehabilitate and reintegrate them into society. The Information and Government Authority announced the provisional results of the 2022 Foreign Direct Investment Statistics, which showed a 5.8% increase in FDI volume to 13.3 billion BD. The statistics measures the volume and inflows of foreign investment made by the key entities in different economic sectors. This data is vital in helping decision makers set suitable policies to attract further investments and contribute to the kingdom's economic development. The statistics aim to identifying sources of foreign investment according to non-resident investors' country of residence, in addition to identifying sectors that attracted the most investments. 
The chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Arab Observatory for Human Rights and President of the Arab Parliament, Adil Assoumi, praised the decision of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to establish and form the National Human Rights Committee. Al Assoumi stressed the importance of this decision, which comes within the framework of the vision of His Majesty the King, who gives considerable attention to human rights and affirms His Majesty's interest in applying the highest standards and principles of human rights. He affirmed that Bahrain succeeded in assuming the position it deserves at the Arab regional and international levels in the field of human rights.